Hi, Dan. How's it going? Good. How are Thank you. you. I'm great. Thanks for coming in. Uh, so I saw you at the Business of Fashion last year. And the reason I'm so excited to talk to you is because you are at the forefront of change in the fashion industry. So could you give me your um, Bolt Threads elevator pitch? So at Bolt, we want to use 4 billion years of life on Earth, the example of perfect circular economy for materials, to bring performance and sustainability to the things you wear for the next 10,000 years. We've made, made tens of thousands of materials from nature at lab scale, so tiny amounts, and we've made um, probably about a dozen at kilogram scale or bigger. Right. Um, when you do a kilogram, we take it down the street to a bunch, a bunch of product designers that we employ in a workshop, and then we just try things. Right. Uh, and then we put it on and wear it and say, this is terrible, never do this again. <laughs> or we say, this is amazing, let's go talk to somebody about it. My thing is, so okay, it's, it's mostly leather, right? Yeah, so any startup can do one thing well. Right. Even when you have a lot of money, a lot of people, to do one thing world class. Uh, right now it's Milo, and this is a mycelium-based textile. It's these, you know, essentially the root network of mushrooms, these thread-like cells, and that's what's making up what is Milo at right. the end. And then are you able to make Milo look like different types of leather? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, anything, or just there's a certain... Yeah, we, we, make, we make ones that look like calf, pig, crocodile, ostrich, python, like you name it. It's not, that's actually not a very hard part of the whole thing. Really? Um, I could imagine you being able to put in some, some creases and sort of the texture, but I didn't, like ostrich is a particular thing. It's like sort of the bumps and yep. the... Yeah. Interesting. So do you even use the word leather? Not really. We always did a lot of studying and we found that people don't like it. They don't like comparisons to it. They like the aesthetic. They like the um, look and feel. Right. They don't particularly like the dead animal. They don't particularly like the unsustainable part. Oftentimes in this industry, the answer has been, oh, I need an alternative to like a grown or an animal product. Everyone turns to a plastic based product. Right. If you're a consumer and you care about the environment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty quickly, you're like, well, this is pretty damaging, but plastic is not the alternative I want. Yeah. Uh, our mantra internally is to be not just net neutral, but net positive. Right. Right. How do you, how do you make the world better? By what you're doing. Have you found it companies are open to it, the idea of it, or is it very big ship to turn around when we have old established labels, for example? No, it's quite easy actually, but it's it's because we all work for the same boss, uh, consumer. Right. At the end of the day, the consumer decides. And, and what's happening now is consumers are asking for something different. Has the the uh, the question of scale been brought up? Because oh. obviously, but I know you can produce mm -hmm. a heck of a lot. Mm -hmm. Are you at a point where you could supply multiple companies? We're, so we're starting to produce heck of a lot. Scale is the problem. And here's, right. the, here's the fundamental disconnect that I've learned coming at this from the science perspective. So as scientists, we operate at lab scale where you're doing little tiny experiments on a bench, you know, using milligrams or micrograms of, of materials in our case. We go to fashion and people are like, our MOQ uh, minimum order quantity is 10,000 units or 100,000 units. And you're like, how big is a unit? Like a kilogram each. Oh, crap, we got to make a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Today, when we look at Milo, we're, we're setting up supply to do a million square feet a year of Milo by the end of this year. Vastly more after that. We can supply multiple brands with that. The large brands use a million square feet of leather for one style of one handbag. I oh, really? In a season. Interesting. So we got a long ways to go, but we can see, we can see where the future takes. So how, how, how fast are the innovations coming where you are going to be able to produce at a big enough to get the big, big companies? Oh, we're getting the big companies now. We just haven't announced it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah. So you do, so you're there. Yeah. 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 No, but we can't supply every, we can, we cannot meet the demand we have today. My mm -hmm. business development, my head of business development, get somewhere between five and 10 calls a day. Really? From companies that want to use Milo. Congratulations. Amazing. Oh, I'm still terrified because we have to, <laughs> we have to supply all of that. We have to make everything else work. Yeah. But um, we are frantically installing capacity around the world. You know, what are you sort of most excited about right now in terms of, uh, in terms of the future, not just of your company, but in terms of the, the fashion industry? The thing I find amazing about this, I, we get made fun of, where in the beginning we get made fun of a lot for going into fashion, right? Because we come from science and like, oh, why aren't you doing medical or right. things that matter in the world? And I actually find that when you look at fashion and consumer, 
you're talking about something every person can participate in. It impacts every, literally all 7 billion plus of us on the planet. Our actions day by day are the single biggest cause of damage to our environment and our own future. Right. And fashion has this long history of leading the way in yeah. st- not just style, but uh, uh, human rights, uh, uh, ethics, animal rights. Like, there's all these things that fashion has a long history of, of leading the way on. Wouldn't it be a great story if fashion becomes the place that leads the way, that humans fix our own environment? Yeah. How, how, how can you not be excited about that? That's, then that, that's a very viable future for us. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, then please remember to subscribe.